Hello, I'm Dawn Westmoreland, hailing from Asheville, North Carolina, the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. Asheville, North Carolina is a destiny place where many people love to come. And I'm so proud to be part of 103.7 FM, the voice of, of uh, Asheville. So my show is about the workplace. And sometimes people think workplace, we're thinking corporate, big companies. No, the workplace could be entrepreneurship, solarpreneurship. It could be the company. It could be about the employees, the leadership. Today, I have a guest, Val Roskins Tees. And we were just having this interesting conversation before uh, I started to record is her last name is spelled T as in Tom, E-W-S. And she says it's often misspelled. So I am so glad to know how to say her correct name. Good morning, Val. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for asking me. Yes. So to the audience, I want you to know that Val is one of the best you know, writing content people I know out there. She's positive. She's the best cheerleader. We're going to talk about LinkedIn because that's her area of expertise. And I know that, you know, she has expertise in different areas too. So Val, why is it important to get it right on LinkedIn, you know, to put content out there and get attention? Why is it so important? Well, I think that's the way you can shine. Being authentic is the way that's, you're the only you. Nobody else can be you. And that's the way you're going to stand out is by being you and shining. That's the way you can make an impact. That's the way people are going to, you know, that know, like, and trust factor. That's how you establish it. Because if you just repost somebody else's content, they're not going to know who you are. If you don't talk about what's important to you, they're not going to know what your values are. And so that's the way to get to know people. And I think you found it, you know, when you're looking on LinkedIn and find a post that you like, you start to relate to that person because of what they said. And if you don't like it, scroll on and, and don't talk to them. But I have found it's been really fun for me being on LinkedIn because what started out as a connection, just the name has turned into a relationship and in some cases a friendship. And I've even met some people in person, which has been fabulous. So it's connections that I never would have met people from all over the world, basically, yeah. because I've been in. Now that, that's amazing and wonderful. And I met you on LinkedIn, and I know you have done some work for people that I know, the circle of friends that I know. Talk about the work that you did for me, because it's really been beneficial on my part. Well, good. Glad. I, I, I'm glad. Thank you. Um, I like helping people tell their story. Because that's where the inner greatness comes through. That's where you shine. Um, I was able to create a bio for you on um, a platform where you shine as a speaker. And what's fun is when pe I've had people say to me, I can't write about myself. I can totally get that. I can't either. <laughs> but when you, the fun that I have and the satisfaction that I get is like you, we got on a conversation and you just started talking to me. You told me about what's important to you. And I was able to take your words and create the story. People are like, well, I don't know what to talk about. Just start talking to me. I asked some questions and we create a story that is authentically you. And that's the way that you can help other people because of what you've been through. People need to hear that. Amazing. And do you think everyone has a story out there, Val? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody has a story. Everybody has that inner greatness. Everybody can shine. And sometimes it's just talking to people, talking to someone about it. I know as I've been talking to people about what I do, the more you talk to them, the more clarity you get, because they're going to ask a question, go, what's obvious to you? may not be obvious to someone else. And as you go to explain it, you're like, oh, well, that's how I can say it. That's how I can tell people about it. So you get clarity by sharing your story. Now, you know, maybe it's the American culture. I think it is where a lot of people think, hey, I got to put something out there Monday through Sunday. I mean, <laughs> some kind of content because they feel that if they're not out there constantly, constantly, that they may not get noticed. What are your thoughts on that, Val? Um, personally, no. <laughs> it's really <laughs> hard. <laughs> um, I think the key 
from my experience and from what I've heard others say mm -hmm. is consistency. Uh, consistency doesn't mean every day. Doesn't have to mean every day. I mean, if some people do, and that's fine, but for the majority of people, and I'm saying like 99%, I think, uh, be consistent as in, if you're gonna post once a week, twice a week, three times a week, it doesn't have to be every day and have the content relate to you. You know, whether it's mm -hmm. something, and I don't think it always has to be about business either. I think you post something personal like ice cream, flowers, running. I mean, I posted about ice cream before because <laughs> oh. I like ice cream. <laughs> yes, a lot of people do. Yes, well, it's it's a way for people to be able to relate to you because gotcha. you are more than just your job or your business. And, it, you know, I'm sure everybody's heard the know, like, and trust factor. Well, you can't start to know someone and like them and trust them if you don't know who they are. Now, I realize ice cream isn't the make or break, <laughs> but it's a way to start a conversation with somebody. Do you find when you talk about personal things like ice cream or dogs or running or whatever, that more people engage sometimes than when you're given business tips? Yes. Yes. Why because it's something I think because it's something that people like I'm not a runner. I will walk, but I'm not a runner, but I know like Dave Marlowe talks about running. Okay. Uh, I can relate to what he's talking about, even though I'm not a runner, but the lessons that he includes with it or the insights, a lot of times it's incredible insights. Okay. So I've gotten to know him through him sharing about running. And I actually had the privilege last summer to meet him and his wife and it was fabulous. So, awesome. but that's, but that's a way you know, you start to get to know the person. It's a way to get to know the person. And and I'm not saying when I say personal, I don't mean, you know, the deep, dark, secret details. That's not what I'm talking about. It's a way for your personality to shine because you might connect with someone else who likes running or ice cream or flowers or whatever. And you'd be amazed then how you can start a conversation with that person. And that will help establish a connection, which can lead to relationship which in some cases can lead to a friendship. And that's to me is the best part about LinkedIn is the relationships and friendships that I've made. Because yeah. if you had said to me before I got on LinkedIn and before Zoom and before the pandemic that I would meet people and consider them my friends, but have never met them in person, I would have said, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, no so. way, you have to meet them in person. But I have established friendships, which I consider friendships, with people that I have met only through LinkedIn. That is a, a, a just a bonus. It's just mm, business and connections and meaningful relationships. Now, let's talk about content. So, for example, if somebody comes to you and let's say, let's make up something they do. Maybe they're a leadership coach. There's a lot of those people out there. And they come to you and it's like, I don't have the time or the energy. I, I, you know, I need content out there. Could you give me some examples of what you do to help those type of people get ahead? Well, one way that I do, there's, there's a number of ways you can do it. One way that I am helping people, um, I have a process called my golden anchor method. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is creating content by creating an anchor article or a main article. And from that main article, then we leverage out the content into LinkedIn posts. Now, my process includes getting on a Zoom call. You pick a topic. Okay, say, Don, I'm going to talk to you and you have a topic on um, leadership. I mean, we'd have to go more detail, but pick one topic. Mm -hmm. And then in that Zoom call, we go through it. We talk about what it is. You're going to sit down with your ideal client. What do you want them to know? What are like the four main points or three main points? And we go through, I record the, the Zoom call so that I have a transcript. So then I write an article that are in your words, in your voice. And then from that article, we go back through it. We make the changes that you want. And then you can take that article and repurpose it into the way my process works, 12 LinkedIn posts. If you post three, three times a week for four weeks, that's a month's worth of content. Wow. From one article and two Zoom calls. Then you have time because you have, we 
we schedule out, we get the copy, we get the content for these 12 LinkedIn posts. That gives you time then, you have your content. You don't have to worry about what to post on LinkedIn or at least from the business aspect. And that's 10 to 15 hours you can use on your business. That saves you time. Mm -hmm. It's in your voice. You're not quoting someone else. You are quoted. It's authentic to you. And you're sharing what's important for you to share with your ideal client. That's one way to do it. That's not the only way, but that's one way. <laughs> so how has that been successful for you doing that I think, kind of work? I think it has been. It has helped people. I've had people tell me that it saved them a lot of time. It saved them a lot of stress because they don't have to think about what to write about. It's empowered them because they are putting out content they know is true to them. And it's making an impact in the way they want to make an impact. When somebody reaches out to you and you want to get their story and they say, I don't know what the story is. How do you help them unfold that story or unpack that story? Because well, it's amazing. I meet people out there. I don't know what my story is. <laughs> well, I actually have a list of questions that I can send ahead of time to think about. Um, especially when it's kind of, I kind of have two parts. One is my golden anchor method and one is helping people tell their story, um, their backstory, their origin story, whatever you want to call it. And I do have a list of questions that I can send out. I can either send it out ahead of time or just some people want to know ahead of time to think about it. And other people will say to me, nope, just ask me then. I want to think about it on the spot. <laughs> it's like, whatever. <laughs> um, so it's a list of questions that just gets you to start thinking because I truly believe everybody has a story. Everybody has a success story because mm -hmm. each person is worthy just the way they are. Oh, love that. Love that. Love that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be or do anything to be worthy. Just being you is enough. And that's what I try to help them mm -hmm. in telling their story. Again, it goes back to sharing their inner greatness help them shine because every person is important. Yes. Oh boy. Boy, that was just awesome, Val. Mm -hmm. We all love success stories. I know the listeners here love success stories. What, you know, what kind of success story do you have out there? And you don't have to say their name, but where you've helped somebody tell their story or, you know, write content and they got back with you and you said, oh my gosh, Val, guess what just happened? You know, something good happened. Well, I'd say um, one example of helping um, someone tell their story is I had a couple contact me and they had recently purchased a um, well-established construction company mm. and they purchased it because they believe in what the owner that had started it, his values, his principles and everything. And, and they were going to keep those, but they wanted to bring themselves into the story, you know, into the business too. And they're like, mm -hmm. but we don't know what to write about. We don't know how to tell our story. So we sat down. It was really fun because I think I'd ask a question and, and they were the couple, it was a husband and wife that were, for you know working together and they'd start talking to each other and I think they forgot I was there sometimes <laughs> so it was great how the questions just started you thinking and sometimes all you need is one or two questions before you realize hey I can answer this I can do this yeah and they started talking to me and like I said I record it so that I can get your words and your voice and they started sharing and I wrote up the story for them and they're like that's exactly what we wanted, but we didn't know how to say it. Ah, oh, so that made me feel really good. Your gift. I was able to take, basically, I'm organizing your thoughts and words and putting it in writing. It's it's still you. I'm just kind of the um, I don't conduit or whatever the person that the person who puts it in puts it down on paper so you have it and then you can use it in you know a whole bunch of different ways, obviously. But then you have the story and you can go back to it and go, yep. That's me. Or if you don't like part of the story, you can go, I know how to change it now. Mm. Or they've told me, you know, how this is what it was. This is what we've changed it to. And that ah. is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Do people ever come back and say, I want to tell another story? Um, they haven't to me, but um, I'm 
welcome to do that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because sometimes it's, there's like chapters to your story. And if you <laughs> told the whole book, <laughs> it would be too long. So you take parts of it. And I've helped him with that too. It's like, let's just take this part right now. And then let's come back and do the second part because you don't want to, you know, it's kind of one idea, one story, but there can be lots of stories. So yeah, you can, but you want to, you know, if you're confusing, then people don't, and people don't have clarity, then they're not going to get your message. So we focus, you know, on one idea and then there can be another idea and there can be another idea, but you want to have clarity and sometimes talking through it gives you clarity um, I found that as I was telling somebody what I did, then it was like, as I was talking to them, like, oh, that's the way, or they'd ask me a question. I'd say, oh yeah. Okay. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how, how many times can you use your story, you know, out there on LinkedIn? Well, I'd say you can use it over and over because mm -hmm. you can take different parts of it. You can take one, like a quote that you are the person being quoted rather than Maya Angelou has great quotes, but you see that a lot or Teddy Roosevelt or Abraham yes. Lincoln or whoever. Mm -hmm. Take a quote out of your story, put that, make it a graphic, put that in as a LinkedIn post and then do just a short one or two paragraphs talking about that. Do another quote, do like, do a story one a lot of times there's stories within stories take one of the stories or one of the points you're trying to make create a video tell the story videos are powerful too it doesn't have to be all in writing but you can use that you can use it i specialize in linkedin that's that's where my expertise is but you can use it on facebook you can adapt it for Instagram. You can adapt it for Twitter. That's the neat thing is once you have your story in writing, you can leverage it. You can repurpose it in a whole bunch of different ways. Now, I remember working with you, Val, and you asked me three of my super strengths. Why do you do that with your clients? I learned that from Simon Parsons in ah. the LinkedIn course I took from him. I'm going to give him credit. It's kind of like, what's your super strength? What's your superpowers? Because I don't think a lot of times we stop and think what they are, partly because we just don't stop and think about it, but also because if something is really easy for you, you don't stop and concentrate on it. Mm -hmm. But things that are easy for you may not be easy for me, but your super strength is being able to help people with that. A lot of times we're like, well, everybody does that. No, everybody doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like for me with tech, tech is, I struggle with tech a lot. Okay. Understanding it, how to do it. I have met Asmara Kazmi, who is brilliant with that. And she has helped me so much. That's her superpower. That's her strength, but it's definitely not mine. But what I found is find the people who are good in the areas that you aren't, get their help, and then you are free then to help people in the areas you're good in. Awesome. Find your zone of genius. I can't remember who, who told me that phrase. That's not mine, but I can't. Find your zone of genius. Focus on that. And the areas that aren't, feel, I mean, give yourself permission to ask for help. Yes. I think some people are afraid, oh, if I ask for help, they're going to think I'm dumb or whatever. It's like, no, no. By asking for help, you're giving that person a chance to do something good and to help you. By helping someone else, you're helping yourself. It makes really good sense. Yes. You know, kind of the giving and receiving. I don't know. Most people or some people like I'm good at giving. I'd rather give than receive <laughs> but I think it was um Yermi Kirkus that told me this when you give when you receive you're allowing that other person to give you can't give oh, if someone doesn't it. receive 
I've had that conversation with my own mother who's 82 and who is more of a giver than a taker. <laughs> and I said, you know, it's like a gift and a present for the other person to do something nice for you. Yes. yes. What's your ideal client, Val? Someone who wants to make an impact and wants to help others. Um, that kindness and compassion and generosity are important to them because then those are the kind of people I want to work with. I want to help. Mm -hmm. I want to, because then together we can make a difference because we can make an impact. And I think in our world today, kindness and generosity or <laughs> and compassion are really needed. <laughs> and yes. the people who are willing to focus on that versus the negative. And I know there's negative and I know you can't get away from it, but you can choose where your focus is going to be. Yes, you sound like a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Just a writer. <laughs> Positivity, yes, absolutely. So what else do you offer as far as services? You do story, you know, help with storytelling, content. I know you have a long history in writing. Are there any other services that you provide to clients? Um, those are the two main ones that I'm focusing on right now. That's not to say I've had people come to me and say, can you do... Um, this and it's like, like I am helping someone right now with um, her ebook, create helping her just organize her thoughts into an ebook. Mm -hmm. But that isn't something that I'm like advertising because it's just something she it, it's a case by case basis, I guess. If somebody gotcha. has a project, then and they think mm, maybe you know they'd like to work with me, I'd love to have a, a conversation and see if it's a good fit because there have been things that people have come to me and said, mm -hmm. can you do this? Like her writing a speech. No, yeah. I can't write a speech. I'd be happy to help edit it after it's written. <laughs> At least I'll say suggested edits. You know, I can read through it and go, okay, this is what didn't make sense to me, or you might say it this way. Um, so I always call it suggested edits, but I guess it's have a conversation and I can, we can talk about if it's a good fit or not. And if I don't think I can do something well, I will say it, but I also will try to find someone in the network that can help you. If I know of somebody, I'll say, you know what? You need to talk to this person. That's their zone of genius. It's not mine. So I want to focus on my zone of genius because then I feel I can help people the best. Gotcha. Now you give somebody an engaging content to put out there and we have algorithms, <laughs> you know, just because we have, I'm just making this number up, Val, 10,000, uh, people that are following us or connected to us, we know that not all 10,000 people are seeing it. Any tips, you know, to get more people to, to your content? Well, the algorithm is a total mystery to me, so I'm not even <laughs> going to pretend I understand it. I think the best thing is to just be consistently, authentically you. The right people will find you and the people you don't want, you don't want them to connect with you anyway. Um, I think it's a long game, not a short game, or it's a marathon, not a sprint, or whatever mm -hmm. analogy you want to use. Um, I don't have an answer to that. I don't know. But I think if you consistently post content that you believe in, that is honoring to what you believe in, I think you'll find the right people. And I think the other thing is consistent. And that, again, it doesn't mean every day, three times a week. You can do it three times a week, but you're consistently being out there for people to find you. So, for example, if I, you know, consistently did it three times a week, because I know sometimes I have so much on my plate. I, you know, have responsibilities with my elderly mm -hmm. mother and some other things going on, but three times a week is just as good as putting it out seven times. I think so. I'm not a LinkedIn expert, but my experience and from what I've heard from other people, I don't know, or I don't know of anyone who's posting every day. Um, but I have heard the LinkedIn experts say post consistently. And so I think, um, that's been my experience that if you're posting consistently, you will show up then in feeds. Now, will that increase your exposure in the algorithm? I, I don't know. 
I, I don't know how the algorithm works and I'm not going to say that's a guarantee, but I have found that those who post consistently, that's you're, you're, you start seeing them, you start interacting with them. Um, one thing I try to help, um, you know, people with when they shine through writing, it's making that connection, making, and that's going to establish your credibility. It's going to establish your authority, but most of all, it's going to establish that you're a person mm -hmm. and you can relate to people, show them how you relate and the right people, the right tribe, whatever you want to call it, they're going to find you. And the yeah. ones that you don't want, stop and think, do you want them for a client anyway? No. <laughs> I mean, you want people that you like, that like you, that you can work with, you know, joyfully. It's like, do, do you want a client that doesn't bring you joy? No. So put out the content that shows the kind of people you want to connect with. Let's jump ahead and talk about engaging with other people so that they get back engaged with you. Oh, Any important. tips on that? That's super important because if you don't engage, people aren't going to, it's going to backfire on you. So, mm -hmm. okay, first of all, if you post something, make sure you engage with everybody who comments on your posts. That's an absolute but also I think just as important is you going to other people's posts and making com thoughtful comments mm -hmm. on theirs. And one thing that I did, and hopefully this will help others, is when I first got on LinkedIn, I didn't know anybody. There are very few people. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't know how to do this. And I thought, oh, you know, nobody knows me. So I can say whatever I want because nobody knows me. Nobody cares. So I started picking out posts of people that I liked the post. I liked what they said. And to psych myself out to make a comment, I pretended they were a friend. And I post, I commented as if they were already a friend. And so my comment related to whatever they said, but it was like, oh, well, we're, this is what I'd say to a friend. And that actually worked really well because some of those people that I started posting with early on, I have, I can honestly say I've become friends with, but I had to psych myself out to say, I don't know what to post nobody. And it's like, okay, I'm just going to pretend they're already a friend. They, my friend posted this. What would I say to them? You know, if I was talking to them, what would I say to them? And that helped me a lot in posting. Mm. I'm, commenting. I'm sorry. In meaningful commenting. advice. So post like it's a friend because it's not a platonic, oh, I love it. You know, I love you. Yeah, no. <laughs> and two, if you start making comments, a thoughtful comments, besides not, oh, thanks for sharing, or I love it or something, but make thoughtful comments that show you read it, people are going to notice that. You're going to stand out that way. And I've had some people connect with me saying, thank you for commenting. Thank you for, you know, reading my post you know, can we connect? I want to get to know you better. And that's how I've made some of my connections because they've come back to me noticing that I was commenting on their, making thoughtful comments on their posts. And for me, it's like, if I can't say something nice, you know, the old adage, your mama said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> then I didn't comment and I just skipped that post. And I found posts that I could relate to and that I could say something, you know, I could make a, a, a positive comment on, but that that's just my internal rules <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, Val, speaking of standing out, you really stand out. I'm glad I've worked with you and other people might want to work with you too. So let's get some of your contact information. Uh, where can people find out more about you, your services? Um, I think the best place is on LinkedIn. That's where I'm most active. And it's just Val, V-A-L, Roskins, R-O-S-K-E-N-S, T's, T-E-W-S. And that's that's the best place because that's where I'm at. Um, probably more time than I should be. <laughs> but that's, I kind of look at LinkedIn as my writing playground. Yep. And have the big thing is have fun with it. Don't. Yes. Don't stress about it and have fun with it. And as um, my business coach, Elise Benham says, you know, kind of make LinkedIn your laboratory, mm. make it an experiment, try something. If it yes. doesn't work, 
go to the next one, try something oh. else and have fun with it. And like she has said, thank, thank you, Val. business friends. We're, we're out of time. Thank and you. I want to say thank you for being on this show and to the listeners, stay in power. We'll have to have Val back. Thank you very much.